Mr. Tim. And Abdullah, it's good to see you too. Masha'Allah. Abdullah, it's good to see you for the film. Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, yeah, we'll talk about it. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إن الحمد لله نحمد تعالى ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو محتد ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا واتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسألون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا واتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم 
ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان الاستك الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله واهلها في النار ايها المسلمون اعلم رحمك الله we've reached this beautiful month of ramadan again wallahi alhamd and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us our good deeds and forgive all of our wicked deeds as we mentioned already in the khutbah al hajjah when we made and listed the statement of the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina that we seek refuge in allah tabarak wa ta'ala from ourselves ourselves that we were our worst enemies and we seek refuge in our evil deeds because no one knows what we do in the depths of the night except allah tabarak wa ta'ala and that brings us to the mawdu at hand the topic i wanted to talk about and it is around the statement of allah tabarak wa ta'ala where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-karim wa laqad wasayna alladhina amanu al-kitab min qablikum wa iyyakum an ittaqu allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran and the quran is the divine speech of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's the speech of allah tabarak wa ta'ala and we should have no doubt about that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa laqad wasayna alladhina amanu al-kitab we have ordered those who believe in the book from those people before you and you as well in it took Allah to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of course this is the holy month of Ramadan and that's what we want to achieve we want to achieve taqwa we want to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and increase our iman what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say as the natija of 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 Ramadan qala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabi al-karim ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe. So Allah addresses the believers. He didn't address the Hindus and the Sikhs and the others. He didn't address them. He addressed Ahli Iman. He said, O you who believe. It was written or it was prescribed for you to fast. Similar to the way it was written to, uh, to fast for those who came before you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you would gain taqwa. So that you would gain you would become more god conscious you would be more fearful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we it comes to the question what is taqwa what is taqwa allah azza wa jalla we hear it all the time taqwa in its reality is comprised of two things or two components make up taqwa allah azza wa jalla the first one is amal bi ta'atillah ala nur min allah وَرَجَاءَ رَحْمَتِهِ So the first component of taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal is doing, being obedient to Allah. عَلَى نُورُ مِنِ اللَّهِ I love this, this aspect of the definition. عَلَى نُورُ مِنِ اللَّهِ Meaning with the guidance of Allah because you cannot do those righteous deeds without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without Him having decreed that for you. Yes, we make the effort. But it's been fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we even have another chance to fast another day of Ramadan. That we have another chance to make the Salat al-Jumu'ah. That we have another chance to give salams to one another. Hadha min fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And seeking the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the first aspect of taqwa. Is that it is being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands. And the second as- aspect of taqwa وَتَرْكْ مَعْسِيَةِ اللَّهِ عَلَى النُورِ مِنِ اللَّهِ خَيْفَةً عَذَابِ اللَّهِ Is that it is leaving the sins 
leaving the disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all the things we watch, from all the things we listen to, from all the things we say, it's leaving that, leaving it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, we should leave that not only in Ramadan, but all the time. Well, Ramadan is, is, is tedribat. Tedri it is, it is like exercise and it's practice for us to leave the ma'asi. The ma'asi. So it is leaving the disobedience to Allah, ala nur min Allah, with the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fearful of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what the ulama say as far as the components of taqwa. The components of what makes up taqwa. So if someone asks you about what is taqwa Allah azza wa jal, you can say it is staying away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited and it is doing what He commanded. And this brings up another point, and we don't want to make it a very long point, but we want to mention some, some Sharia principles here. One of the things the fuqaha say, that the scholars of fiqh and jurisprudence, they say, Al-Amr yufid al-wujub, wal-nahi yaktadi tahreem. Al-Amr yufid al-wujub, which means that whenever we have a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al-kareem, or oh, we hear, we have a, a, a sahih hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's a commandment, it involves a commandment. Then that shows it's an obligation. The asal of that is an obligation unless there comes other dalil from kitab Allah wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which shows us that it goes from wajib, from being an obligation to mandub. Or to another hukum uh, within the ahkam of the ahkam of khamsa. And the other aspect of that is the nahi. That if we hear a prohibition from the Qur'an, and we hear a pro- prohibition from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it lets us know that it's haram. Stay away. Allah doesn't want us to have riba. Stay away from riba. Allah orders that. What are some examples? Some examples of this. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as far as the command, وَأَقِيمُ salat. All of us know this. Allah orders us to pray. That's an order. You, uh, and, and, the ev- and that is proof that it's wajib. It's an obligation unless we had other evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah to show us otherwise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَوْلُهُ فَمَنْ شَاهِدَ مِنْكُمْ الشَّهْرَ فَلِيْسُونَ That whoever amongst you witnesses the, the shahr or sees the signs of Ramadan, then fast. And that's wajib. You know, that's a, an emr. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ As we mentioned, يَا لَذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ سِيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ لَذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلَكُمْ لَعَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us with fasting. He orders the believers with fasting. And it's an order letting us know it's an obligation. And also another fayda from that ayat is as we said, لَعَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that way we'd achieve taqwa. Allah is helping us to gain the tariqah to taqwa. He's helping us to get to fear Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهَذَا النِّعْمَ عَظِيمًا and then from some of the examples of the nahi, of the prohibitions. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ حُرِمَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ الْمَيْتَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It has been prohibited for you, the mate, meaning that which has not been slaughtered by the sharia, that according to the, the sharia ahkam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَوْلُهُ وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا فَوَاهِشْ and do not come near fawahish like zina and, and, and all the other fisk. So stay away from adultery and fornication and those things which lead to it. And that's a command from Allah. That's a nahi. That's a prohibition. Had a wajib alayna to, to do this. And, and whenever we have something that's wajib upon us, that means we get adjur for doing it and we get sin for leaving it. And if it's a nahi, if it's tahrim or it's muharram, then if we do it, we get sin. And if we leave it, we get ajr. You get ajr for leaving the haram. You get ajr for leaving the makruh. So now that it's Ramadan, you will get ajr if you leave. Leave some of the television. Because we know there's kathra to kalam min ulama. There's a lot of different opinions about the tele- television and all these things. But for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, strive your best at least Ramadan. Stay away from it. Stay away from the shubahat. As the Prophet sallallahu said, ittaqul shubahat. Leave the shubahat, leave the doubtful things, the things we don't know for sure. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Alayhi afdal salatu wa salam al halal bain wa haram bain wa bain huma amur mushtabihat la yalamun a kathir min anas." He said, "The halal is clear, and the haram is clear, and between them is doubtful things. We don't know. 
لا يعلمون كثير من الناس most of the people don't know who knows the ulama أهل العلم so we need to go back to them to know what is halal and what is haram because they know they have fiqh fi deen من فضل الله سبحانه وتعالى so taqwa it's to place a barrier between yourselves and what you fear things like of, uh, first and foremost Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we fear Allah tabarak wa ta'ala at taqullah and we fear the anger and the wrath and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how can we do that as we mentioned by observing his commandments and staying away from his prohibitions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran orders us to stay away from those things that we mention قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم اتقوا النار التي وقودها الناس والحجارة عدة للكافرين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fear the nar, fear the hell, hellfire That which is fueled by men in stone And it's been prepared for those who disbelieve Walhamdulillah, we're, from, we're all from Ahli Iman bi Allah ta'ala We came here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but however, this ayat is also is, 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 is a, something to make us fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear the fire. How do we have taqwa again? By doing the halal, doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us, staying away from the haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمٍ تُرْجُونَ فِي Fear the day in which you will return. Fear يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ That's another thing we should fear. Because we don't know our hisab. None of us knows whether we're going to Jinnah or Nar. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ As we mentioned, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ حَقَ تَقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُ مُسْلِمُونَ Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the asl of taqwa. And that's what we all strive to do. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq and a class with thabat ala sunnah. وَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd I wanted to mention very briefly some of the statements of the pious predecessors regarding taqwa about how they define taqwa the, the earliest generations meaning the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in and the tabi'in their students those people who met the sahaba may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon them rahmatullahi alayhim and the itba'a tabi'in those who followed them and then those who follow them إلى يوم الدين على إحسان قال ابن عباس رضي الله تلا عنهما قال متقون الذين يحذرون من الله أكوبته ابن عباس رضي الله تلا عنهما he said when defining the متقون those people the pious ones he said they are those who beware the punishment of Allah they stay away from it they avoid it they avoid the, the punishment of Allah. Those things that Allah has prohibited, they, they stay far away from it. And I have to make this 10B. Because it, it, it shocks me and it saddens me that we have some people who adhere, are considered people of knowledge and then they say things like, it's permissible to get a house on riba. Allah makes war on the person who makes riba. Who, who takes riba. How can you say that it's permissible to get one house? And we know the qa'id of fiqiyah. We know that the ulama that according to kitab wa sunnah, and the fahim of the, the earliest generations, we know that al 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 mahdurat. We know this. We know that in a necessity, that it becomes permissible to do something impermissible. But that's only out of necessity. What is durura? Durura is if you're close to death, you know, something you need it for survival. But I don't think any of us needs to take a house on interest to survive. There's plenty of apartments for rent. There's plenty of other ways to, to survive. So stay away from the muharramat. وَقَالَ حَسَنَ الْبَسْرِ رَحِيمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى الْمُتَّقُونَ الْمُتَّقُونَ اتَّقُوا مَا حُرِمَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَدُوا مَا أَفْتَرَدَ عَلَيْهِمْ He said the mutaqoon, those people who are the pious ones, that they fear what has been prohibited for them, and they do what has become an obligation for them. So they do what Allah has commanded in His Prophet ﷺ. 
وقال عمر بن عبد العزيز رحمه الله تعالى قال ليس تقوى الله بصيام النهار ولا بصيام الليل وتخليط فيهما بين ذلك ولكن تقوى الله ترك ما حرم الله وادو ما افترض الله beautiful beautiful statement by Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala he said that taqwa it's not fasting during the day which we are doing and it's not making qiyam al-layl qiyam al-layl it's not it's not standing in the night prayer that's not what taqwa is and nor is it mixing between the two doing a little bit of both however taqwa law is leaving what he prohibited and doing what he commanded why is this relevant for us because during the fast sometimes some of our brothers and sisters mashallah tabarak wa ta'ala this is for all of us and may allah guide us all to the sawab to what is correct but sometimes we strive our best during the day then we break our fast and we go right to the muharramat we go back to looking at something muharram on the youtube we go back to looking at this on the show uh, showtime or whatever we go back to this we go back to this we go back to the ghiba and namima we get in the gatherings we even have jalasat and we sit and make ghiba and namima we slander and backbite one another speak ill of this brother this one did this oh i heard so and so did this what did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say when he went past the graves he went past two graves and they were yahud in there مر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على قبرين فقال انهم اللي يعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير اما اهلهم فكان لا يستتر من البو واما اخر فكان يمشي بالنميمه the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was walking by some graves and these were graves of the yahud as it came in other narrations and he said that verily those people are being punished in the graves had umur al ghaib the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that knowledge because we wouldn't know when we go by the graves we don't know if someone's being punished or they're getting the naim of the khabar we don't know this of the khabar and so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said they're being punished in the graves and they're being punished for something that is 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 that the people don't think is a big deal or, or they take lightly as for one of them is they didn't make proper istinja you know they didn't clean themselves properly when going to the restroom as for the other that they used to make namima they used to carry the tales they used to hear something from the people and spread it in order to spread fasad in order to spread evil those are major sins avoid them those are the things the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned us against and first and foremost allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us against that qala ibn mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu fi qawlihi ta'ala ittaqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said commenting on the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ittaqullaha haqqa tuqatihi fear Allah uh, the full having full taqwa as much as you can the, the full haqiqat taqwa fear Allah as much as you can what did Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu say he said an yuta'a fala ya'sa wa an yuzkar fala yunsa wa an yushkara fala yukfara Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said commenting about that ayat he said that it is being obedient and staying away from disobedient not being disobedient to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what taqwa is and then he said and it is to remember Allah much dhikr make dhikr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't forget Allah don't forget your lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is to be grateful for the ni'mah or the ni'am that Allah has given you the blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and don't be ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where do we find taqwa Allah azza wa jal the mahala taqwa is the heart your taqwa is in the heart as with many acts of ibadah shaykh al-islam ibn taymiyah rahimahullah ta'ala he said a beautiful statement in defining what is ibadah what is worship in islam qala shaykh al-islam al-ibadatu al-ibadatu كل كل ما يحبه الله ويرضاه من افعال والاقوال الظاهر والباطن وكما قال الشيخ الاسلام he said that ibadah or worship is everything that Allah loves and everything that Allah is pleased with from statements and actions that are outward and inward and so we don't have a lot of time to expand on that as it's we're reaching the time to close but taqwa is an inward act of ibadah why because the mahala taqwa is the heart You may see one of your brothers and sisters mashallah she wears the big hijab min fadl Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa hadha shay'a 'adhim shay beautiful 
But that is not necessarily the deal that she fears Allah. We don't know what she does later. And that's not calling into doubt about our brothers and sisters. But the point is, the asl of taqwa, the, the mahal is the heart. Someone may exhibit beautiful aspects of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but they may be ba'id, haqiqatan. Or they could be the munafiqoon wa ayyadu billah. That's, that's the reality, so taqwa. And what does the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? قَالَ عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَسَلَامَ تَقْوَهَا هُنَا وَيُشِيرُ إِلَى صَدْرِهِ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, تَقْوَهَا هُنَا And he pointed to his chest three times, letting us know it's in the heart. قَالَ عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَسَلَامَ In another sahih hadith, إِنَّ فِي جِزَدْ مُضْغَةً وَإِذَا صَلَاهَا صَلَاهَا جِزَدَ كُلُّ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَتْ جِزَدَ كُلُّ أَلَا if it is healthy, the whole body is healthy. Verily, it's the heart. It's the heart. Not meaning that the other outward things aren't a part of Iman. Because of course, a part of Iman and Taqwa is what's inside. The asl is in the heart. But it's also the, what you do on your limbs. And it's also what you say on your tongue. All of that makes up Iman. All of that makes up Iman. And all of that makes up Taqwa Allah is that we fear Allah inwardly and outwardly. But no one can judge your taqwa. We don't have a barometer for taqwa. We only can make judgments outward. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's inside of you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And very quickly, I just want to mention, what are some of the ways we can get some of this taqwa? One of the things is ilm al nafiyah is seeking knowledge. All of us should seek knowledge. Alhamdulillah. We have this masjid here. And I believe you own this masjid. It's a masjid built from the ground up. You should all sit in something. Read a hadith once, once a day. Benefit something for the heart. Do something. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Man Allahu bi khairin din." Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. The Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, He said, "Man salaka tariqan yaltalmasuhu bi alman sahallallahu nuhu tariqan al jannah." Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him. Not, uh, whenever Allah wants. Uh, the, the one who strives to traverse the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path of Jannah. And you know what the Salaf used to say, the earliest generations, the Sahaba, with Tabi'in, with Tabi'in, tabi'in what did they say? They say, Talib al-Ilm, Talib al-Jannah. The, the student of knowledge is a student of paradise, in fact. Because they're doing it for the sake of Allah, to come closer to Allah. You gain knowledge to learn more about your religion, to practice your religion. Another way, of course, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and as we mentioned in the ayah several times, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ سِيَامْ كَمَا كُتِبَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ We're all doing that, we're all fasting. And that's going to help us, بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ achieve taqwa. Another way, uh, aside from the al and the, and the siyam, is, is doing, uh, making salat in its time. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, he called, سَأَلْتُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ الْأَكْثِرِ سَأَلْتُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَيَا عَمَالَ أُحِبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ قَالَ صَلَاكْتْ عَلَى وَقْتِهَا كُلْتُ ثُمَّ أَيْكَلَ بِرْ وَالِدَيْنِ كُلْتُ ثُمَّ أَيْكَلَ جِهَادْ فِي سِبِلِ اللَّهِ so Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what are the best deeds? What are the best deeds? He said, salat, salat ala waqtiha. That was the first thing. Meaning there's many other a'mal, but that's one thing. That's something we all can do. Make salat in its time. Try to make it in the masjid. If you can't make it in the masjid, when it first comes in, try to make it at home or wherever you are. If you're in the woods hiking, I don't care where you are. Make it in its time, bi idnillah ta'ala. And the second thing he mentioned, bitter walidain. He mentioned being good and kind to your parents. Serve your parents. That's a good deed we can easily get. If our parents are still alive, regardless of whether your parents are Muslim or non-Muslim, serve them. Maybe that will be a reason they will come into Islam. And maybe it will just be any way for your, for your good deeds. Bas, yakfina hadha. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with a class with the battle of the sunnah and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Muslims everywhere. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our brothers and sisters who are in Syria. And bless our brothers in Syria. Uh, bless our brothers, in, brothers and sisters in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and in Yemen, and in Somalia, and wherever they may be suffering. And bless our brothers and sisters in Egypt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Egyptians to, to have Islah in their country. 
and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allah